What's going on YouTube? It's me, Ribsy, from Ribs Doing Film Things. So today we're gonna to talk about editing color negatives in Lightroom only. The Lightroom only solution is a great one because it means you don't need any additional plugins or software. And it's also great because it's very, very simple. There are some tricks that you need to learn about in order to get the best result possible, but the basics are very, very easy and they're fundamental. Let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom and get started. All right, so the first thing you need to do is invert your tone curve. This is actually what's gonna do the initial flip from color negative to actual color positive. So to do that, we scroll down to the tone curve and we pull this side all the way up and we take this side and we pull it all the way down. As you can see, you already now have a color image. Obviously the color is very improper and needs to be rebalanced for color temperature and tint, but you see color now. So to rebalance that, you actually can go up to your white balance up here. If you're lucky and you have something that's some sort of gray in your image, then you can actually just take the dropper and click on it and that'll give you a very immediate um, correction of the color. So in this image, I do have a gray, which is awesome. So I can just do that. But if you don't, let me undo that there. What you need to do is start playing around with your color temperature and your tint. So since I know that this is very blue here and kind of greenish, I wanna remove those when making changes here. So for the temperature, remember everything is inverted here. So if you go to the warm side, that's actually gonna make it cooler. If you go to the cool side, that's gonna make it warmer. So as you see here, that starts to make a shift immediately. So I'm Let's we'll start pulling this over here and there's no exact signs. You kind of have to switch between temperature and tint. So now this is still very green. So I want to add some magenta to it and then I can go ahead and pull that to the side. So it's getting better, but you got to keep adjusting it over and over again. And as you can see here, now we're starting to get to a place where this looks like a real image. So we go ahead and move that there. I'm going to add some more magenta. Actually, I'm going to Leave it right where it is. I really like how this looks already. So now you can see that we have a really good looking image now after the conversion. There's still some tweaks to be made, especially on the contrast front. Typically, when you make these kind of changes to a color negative, you're gonna have to add in a lot more contrast in order to kind of fix the dynamic range. So to add the contrast, we're gonna go down to the tone curve. And the first thing you want to do is redefine your shadows and your highlights. So you see here, there is no data on this side and there's no data over here. We want to change the tone curve to account for the lack of info there. So what we're going to do is, starting with the left side, pull it to where the colors actually start to be defined. So that's right about there. And then do the same thing on, this, on the shadow side. So we pull that in, and then, as you can see now, we have an image that looks pretty realistic now as to what you would expect. The color tones can probably still be shifted a bit, but... In terms of it looking like an image um, that is acceptable and normal, I think we're there. So now what do you want to do? Well, from here you can start to tweak things a bit. Remember, any change you make to color temperature and tint will have an effect on your tone curve. So you want to make sure that you revisit the tone curve um, every time you make any changes over here. And if you want to add contrast, you can do so by playing with the shadows and the highlights here. So of course I can pull that down a bit and then increase those highlights, and now there's even more contrast than there was before. I really like how that looks. It's still a bit blue for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and add just a bit more warmth, and we'll see what happens here. I think I like where this is, and of course you should play around with this um, when you're actually doing this on your own. So you can go ahead and add in some contrast, or sorry, some saturation. So I really like where we are here, and I think this is good enough for this image. The next image we're gonna look at is more of a street style image. And I wanna change it up so that you don't only see portraits, but you see some other things as well. So the first thing we need to do, as usual, is go to the tone curve and invert. So here we go, oops. And there we go, we have our base image. Um, again, this is quite blue here, so we wanna play with the temp and the tint in order to get it to an acceptable place. So let's go ahead and add in a bit of this uh, magenta or sorry, a bit of this yellow, this warmth, and then we're gonna actually add in a bit more magenta. So keep playing around with it till you get it somewhere that looks acceptable. And I think that's probably good enough for now. So we have that base treatment done. Let's go back to the tone curve, and now we have to make our dynamic range adjustment. So you see here there's a big gap. So we're gonna pull this in. Okay, and then on the highlight side, there's not too much of a gap, but we still want to do that as well. So we've got our base color here. Let me pull that up. You wanna make sure that's at 100% or else you're gonna clip some of the highlights. So we've got our base image here and it's still a bit blue. So I'm gonna go back up here 
essentially add in just a bit more warmth. And then let's play with the tint and see what happens here. Okay, so remember this is Kodak uh, 200. So this is Kodak Gold 200. And in terms of color fidelity, you know, it definitely has its own point of view. When making edits, you wanna make sure that you think about the film that you're using. So for example, if you have a very stylized uh, roll, that's gonna determine how the colors look. Basically, you're never gonna get it perfect. And that's because each film stock has its own character. If you have Portra, there's certain things you can expect from it from a color perspective as compared to something like Kodak Gold. So you really wanna keep that in mind with messing around with the colors in Lightroom. So we have a decent base image here. I believe it's still a little oversaturated. So I'm gonna knock that down just a bit, maybe down to minus eight or so. So I actually wanna play with split toning here to fix the cast in the highlights and the cast in the shadows. When it comes to split toning, nothing is reversed. So it actually works as you, as you normally would expect it to. The highlight slider controls the highlights and the shadow slider controls the shadows. So let's start with the highlights here. I wanna make this a little bit less blue, perhaps a bit more warm. So I'm gonna add yellow and increase the saturation here. And you can start to see it's being affected just a bit there. So it's affecting the rest of the image because there isn't too much dynamic range here. Everything is kind of in the mids to highs, but I like where that's at. We can then target the shadows a bit more directly. And for the shadows, I wanna go ahead and make this a bit blue because it is looking very red down there. So we're gonna move this to kind of the blue purple zone right here. Then we're gonna add some of that in for the shadows. And you see it makes a quick difference. Um, so I kinda like where that is. And now that it's a bit less aggressive, I think I can add in the colors again. So I'm gonna remove that minus eight and perhaps even add in a little bit more here. So we're at plus two here. And I actually wanna mess with the color temperature just a bit again, um, cause it's looking a bit too red and warm. So I'm gonna play with that just a bit. There's a lot of green here. So I wanna make sure the green comes through a bit. Um, I like this a bit more here and I'm actually gonna add in some more saturation and make those greens pop just a bit. So this is our final image here. And I kinda like where this is. Um, you can obviously keep tweaking this, but I think for the sake of explanation, we're at a good place here. Our next and final image is a landscape image. So this one is shot on a pinhole camera. So you're gonna see a bit lack of detail that is, that is signature of the pinhole camera style. And also it was shot on Lomo 100, which has its own film character to expect as well. All right, so for this last image, we're gonna try something quite different. So instead of doing anything with the tone curve first, we're actually gonna set our white balance point first. What you wanna do is select your eyedropper and then pick the border of the actual film. So this is gonna convert your white balance to something very, very white, uh, and that's okay. However, you do have to know that the steps after this are gonna be a bit different than the steps we did for the previous two images. So we are gonna go to the tone curve first, but instead of working on the RGB, which is what we typically were working on, we're gonna leave this as is normal. What we're gonna do is target the other colors directly. So we're gonna do the inversion on the specific color channels. So for red, we're gonna go ahead and invert this to start. And then we're gonna go to green and do the same. And then we're gonna go to blue and make that change as well. So as you can see, we have something that looks kind of like a real image here. And yes, this is very blue. So we're gonna go ahead and target the colors directly. This method lets you control the individual colors a bit more other than relying on just the normal white balance and the RGB tone curve. So in this method, we're actually gonna mess around with the individual colors and we'll start with the blue one here. So I'm gonna pull the blues down just a bit, but also remove the clipping here. So we're gonna do what we did earlier, except for the specific color. We're gonna bring this, whoops. We're gonna bring this in so that it matches the tonality of the image. So I'm gonna leave the blues here, but also leave them not full 100% because the image is looking very, very blue. So what I want is some red in here. So we're gonna to go to the red and we're gonna fix the clipping as I mentioned. And you can see this looks a bit better now, still a little blue, but a bit better. So we can play with this and move it where we think it should be. So if you move it left and right, you see that the image kind of gets a bit more neutral color-wise. If you move it up and down, it gets a bit more strong. So I think somewhere in here, probably looks all right. 
and then we're gonna go to the green and mess with around with this just a bit Oops, green right here so we're gonna pull the greens in and you see that really rains in that red very nicely we want to have it somewhere balanced so I think that works right there and then let's see what happens when we bring this in on this side yeah so we're getting rid of some of that red in this in the highlights which I think works as well um, I kind of like that right there still looking a bit blue but again very overcast day and it was pretty much blue everywhere um, let's go to the blue channel directly and see if we can make this a bit less intense by pulling it down yeah you see it's getting a bit less intense here a bit less oversaturated I kind of like where this is going so we'll leave that there and we'll actually pull this up and just see what effect this has so I think this is affecting down here in the shadow area so I kind of like that somewhere right there so as you can see this looks like a real image now and now I think what we can do is kind of play with the normal tools just to kind of bring it to the end so saturation I do want to add just a bit more in order to get some pop um, it is looking a bit blue there so we don't want to go too much um, especially compared to the original product perhaps we can do this on a gradient so I like the sky where it is I don't want to affect that what I want to do is put some saturation down here actually let me redo that because it should start from here there we go all right set the gradient right there and then we're gonna make this one a saturation mask and we're gonna pull this up just a bit okay I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a hint and then I do want to add some contrast because I think we're lacking contrast so I'm gonna do that here you can see the image gets a bit blue when you add contrast you have to account for that so I like where that is right there and I think if we crop it perhaps it'll give us a better look at the overall product so this is what we've got of course you can keep messing around with this it's still a bit blue so perhaps I might want to eliminate some of that but as a whole this method that I just showed you allows you to control that a bit more precisely as compared to the previous two methods where you're simply relying on tint and temperature All right, YouTube, so I hope that was helpful. I know there's two different methods there and they kind of account for different things, but play with both of them and see which one you think works best for you. I think it really depends what kind of image you have. Perhaps one is more suited to portraits and another is more suited to landscapes, but you can figure that out and see what you feel comfortable with. Let me know in the comments which method you think works better for you and which one you think you might prefer. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like. And if you wanna see more videos like this and other topics as well, please give me a subscribe. I would love to be part of your usual lineup. So that's what I got for today. Take care, y'all. Peace.